12-year NBA veteran and a man who is closely associated with the Kentucky Wildcat basketball program and has a wildly popular and entertaining Twitter feed. He's none other than Rex Chapman. How you been, Rex? I'm good, Rich. How are you, buddy? I'm, I'm just licking my wounds from yesterday. Yeah, so. yeah I was about to say, um, <laughs> uh, wh wh what happened, I guess? Let's start with that macro question oh. involving Kentucky basketball, Rex. Well, you know, I think, uh, I think experience, caught up with a lack of experience caught up with us you know we started four freshmen and sophomore for most of the season um and ran into a hot team in auburn we beat them twice we couldn't score we couldn't score down the stretch guys guys have to make plays there were enough there were enough plays yesterday to be made to win that game and we just couldn't make enough shots or make enough plays and uh i guess in terms of auburn basketball um where, where do you stand on the subject of the fact that uh, Chuck Person is uh, has his entire life on the line right now legally, and this team is in the Final Four? The uh, former uh, Auburn uh, assistant uh, who has been ensnared in the uh, in the federal He's legal Chuck, sting. Chuck yeah, Ch Person. Chuck Person. Yes, sir. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. How do I feel about it? Yeah. Uh, personally, uh, I don't care about any of that. I really don't. All these kids, if they're if they're all in the same eighteen to twenty three year old window, I don't care how they got wherever they go. Um, if you got if you're playing a thirty year old, I got a problem with that. But hey, I'm happy for Bruce Pearl. Of course, listen, I've got I know his his family, his kids a little bit. Um, I'm just happy for Auburn. I'm happy for Chuck Charles Barkley. Uh, he started this whole thing way back when, and for them to be in the Final Four. You know, as an SEC guy and as a friend of Chuck's, I'm really happy for him. Yeah, I know Charles was uh, Charles Barkley was ecstatic. We could see that. I mean, he oh, yeah. he was just losing his mind. Uh, which, which is the best team that still remains now? Uh, now that uh, obviously got a red hot Auburn team um, and Virginia moving forward in a in breathtaking fashion against Purdue. Which is the best team still remaining here, Rex? You know, I don't know. I I think that you know at this point it's. One game, you can beat anybody. I think that Michigan State may have the best, the toughest team to be able to play any way you want to play, slow or fast or whatever. Uh, I think that Texas Tech has the best player. Um, and then Virginia, I'm really happy for Tony Bennett and those guys. What a disappointing season they had last year, getting beat by 16. You know, they've got some real talent. they got a big kid who's great, talented guard. Uh, but this is a it's a toss up for me. You know, I've, I'm going to pay less attention now that my guys are out of it. But, <laughs> and, and in fact, yesterday, for real, I was so despondent after our game that uh, I turned off the Duke game at halftime, went to sleep, took a nap, woke up to found that found out they'd gotten beat, thinking that might make me feel better, and and it made me feel worse thinking we could be there in the final four and do not be there. <laughs> mm, that's the way you actually felt about all that. Cause that's exactly you, right. you know, it's interesting, Rex, uh, you're the perfect person to ask this then in that regard, would you <laughs> saying that it would make you feel better that Duke wasn't in, um, you know, my, my 10 year old son who just mm. beat me and the rest of the crew here in our bracket, knowing I'm a Michigan fan, watching me root for Michigan state in that game, uh, asked me why I hated Duke so much, and I didn't right. really have an answer for him, uh, Rex. Yeah, you know, why? You know, why? I really don't either, uh, Rich. Uh, and here's the thing: I I like all the guys that almost every guy that's ever gone to Duke. I really like Coach K. Mm, I, nice. I think he's yes. fantastic. I have a friend Johnny Dawkins, one of my good buddies, Jay Phillips, all those guys. They will love all those guys. <laughs> I just can't stand Duke and the idea of Duke. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I can't stand it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, yeah, uh, that's disappointing. I wanted to see the big kids for Duke play again. I feel like he's a, you know, generational type of player. So I'm a little disappointed for them. But I'm not going to lose too much sleep over it. Yeah, I bet. I know. So, yeah. well, I mean, obviously you got Reddish. You have uh, obviously Zion and, and Barrett. Uh, is this is this a failure of a season for Duke? I hate to be so so you know black and white here yeah. um, because normally I do like to live in the gray area that there's not everything is one thing or the other in sports. But 
you've got this collection of freshman talent that mm -hmm. is so unique, and Duke didn't even make the Final Four. Where do you stand on that subject, Rex? Uh, how do you how, – let me just ask you the question, Rich, because it's what I think about when you ask. How do you view the John Calipari 38-0 team that was beaten by Wisconsin in the Final Four? Right. How, I'm asking you, how do you feel about that? Do you feel like that was a complete and utter failure? No, I do not. Uh, I, I, I kind of do. I kind of do. And so, therefore, I look at Duke this year and I go, yeah, come on. If you've got three of the top five or six guys, you're supposed to win. I guess what I don't get, and maybe it's just my, I'm hypersensitive to the Kentucky you know, sort of critique, is, is, is Kay taking as much grief today as Cal is? I don't know. I know in our neck of the woods, Cal's taking a lot of grief. Um, but I, it seems that maybe Cal's or Kay's being treated with a little kinder gloves after this than Cal might be. Is that right or wrong? Well, I mean, he has taken Duke to a dozen Final Fours. He would have just he would have broken the record that he's tied with John Wooden with had this team beaten Michigan State yesterday. Maybe maybe there was that. But you you I mean, explain to me just, uh, why is Cal getting heat in in the Kentucky know. world right now? I mean, Cal's been there ten years. He's been in the Elite Eight, what, eight times? Uh, Final Four, four or five times? One, one? I just don't get it. It seems like it seems like back in the day, a few years ago, Cal was everything that was wrong with, uh, with college basketball, with one and done and all that. And then Kay started doing the one and done, started going after those guys. And I'm just, you know, he's won one since then. But one, I just, I, I don't understand. I feel like there's just this little different set of rules for Cal as, they're, as opposed to Kay. And I know that they're different types of coaches, but they're Hall of Famers. I just don't get the, the uber-critical uh, narrative on, on Cal all the time. when, it, when it, You know, this team went to the Elite Eight with four freshmen and sophomores starting. Come on. Come on. Rex Chapman here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. So you say Jared Culver's the best player still left. That's the player from uh, Texas Tech that you're referring to? Uh, uh, you said it. Yeah. I just said, yeah, he, I think the, uh, their guy is really good. Um, and listen, they're, they've got another little guard that's really good, uh, plays uh, alongside him. They're a terrific defensive team. Uh, the coach has done a terrific job this year. Heck, any any of these teams can win at this point. What do you think um, of What do you think of Carson Edwards of Purdue and the way well, he was lighting it up, man? Fantastic. Remind me of uh, the way Kemba was controlling everybody way back when. He's he's small, but man, he's a competitor and can put it in the basket. What a fun fun team to watch. What's the best shooting night you ever had, Rex? Oh my gosh. Uh, Man, I have no idea. I, 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 making night or shooting night? <laughs> <laughs> making night, Rex. Making night. Making I love it. Night. Yeah, making oh, night. Where you, where I mean, the kid Klein from Purdue um, yeah. uh, on on Thursday night, and then Carson Edwards on Saturday. It was yeah. just just awesome to watch. Just so much fun. It's what the right. tournament is truly all about what what what's your best making night where it looked like man. you were throwing it into the ocean man i don't even know it's been so long ago i think that uh you do you have those nights from time to time i i, I probably had a few of them in college a few of them in the nba where you just feel like you know everything you shoot's going to go in and uh i think the fun part about it is you know you're ready for that you put in thousands of shots and spent the time in the gym and i know people People will ask those questions like, what do you – I don't look at it the same way. You know, you put the work in, you feel like you belong there, and it's all kind of a blur 30 years later or 20 years later or whatever it is. But it sure is fun watching these young guys now. I don't know. I look back. They do so much stuff better than we all did with our offhand. Uh, they can go, you know, to their opposite hand so much more than we all could. The way they can – these guys can fly down the court, break next speed, pull up on balance and shoot a – run three-pointer or shooting three-pointers all the time off the dribble with high success it's a different game than when I played man so a couple more minutes left here with Rex Chapman uh, on the Rich Eisen show you saying that uh, inexperience caught up uh, with Kentucky the greatest freshman team perhaps since the Fab Five uh, didn't even make the final four uh, is is experience overlooked 
here, Rex, that um, we're talking about all these one and dones and how they are helpful uh, to collegiate programs? Are, are we seeing the other way around right now? You know, I think I'm not exactly sure how to answer that question, but I do think this. We can go back. And, yes, the game's different now. Uh, the rules are different. Uh, someone put out a picture yesterday of the 1984 Final Four. Uh, it was a Sports Illustrated picture. It had Wayman Tisdale and Michael Jordan and Chris Mullen and uh, 10 guys from that year, uh, Sam Perkins. Uh, these were all three- and four-year guys that were in that picture, college guys. And if you go back, 19-year-olds are still 19. And when you get into it, I was much better as a player when I was 20 than I was when I was 17, just getting on Kentucky's campus. And people thought I was good then, and I wasn't. I mean, I was, but I couldn't have played in the NBA. Not as a 17, 18-year-old. I could two years later. So age is a, it's a factor. Not many of us are LeBron or Zion or, you know, Kobe or KG or those guys. And those guys are different. Um, you know, <laughs> youth, you, you got to be really special. We won it a few years ago with the top two picks in the draft, MK, Michael Kidd, Gilchrist, and Anthony Davis. And, but we had a, we had a senior on that team in Darius Miller. Every team that we've had that's really made a deep run has a balance on it of, of some experience. And I think that, you, it, yes, experience is always overlooked. You can't have enough of it. Last thing for you, Rex. I'd be remiss if I did not bring up again. I mentioned one of your more uh, uh, you have one of the more entertaining Twitter feeds, uh, <laughs> and the block or charge. Yeah, uh, I guess bit, the the bit that you find some of the most violent, I guess, <laughs> videos involving human beings running into things, uh-huh. um, and you ask if it's a block or a charge. It is. Where did you come up with this idea? How did it all start with you? Well, Rex? I'm a genius. Let's get that out of the way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, first, I'm an idiot. Uh, there yeah. was no thought that went into it at all. I saw a video of a dolphin swimming in to see a school of dolphins, swimming in towards the shore, and a guy on a paddleboard heading out. The dolphin hit the guy square in the chest, and I, to myself, the idiot that I am, went, aha, that's a charge. And kind of asked the question on Twitter, and people thought it was funny. That's it. That's it. There's nothing more to it. It's the dumbest, lowest form of entertainment. <laughs> we just, I haven't seen this one. We're seeing a panda hitting some poor young lady standing top rope. Charge. She, That's a charge. Well, she, was, she, was, uh, she wasn't moving, right? Is that yeah, what her feet it, were right? set. Yeah, her feet were set. I think the great part about it is the interpretation. Everybody's got <laughs> their interpretation of what happened and nobody's right and nobody's wrong it's just dumb and fun and with stupid stuff going on in the world uh, i think everybody could use a laugh are people sending you ideas now rex oh it's easy now it's easy now because <laughs> yeah i'll just open up my phone from time to time and have 20 20 videos to choose from from followers or, or friends that have said oh you gotta see this so it's easy now <laughs> It is amazing. It's fun. My wife loves it. Everyone, it's it's, uh, it's fun for the whole family, Rex. I'll be honest I with tried, you. I, well, I step over the line from time to time and have to undo some tweets that I did because people will get offended. And a lot of times I won't mind, but I do try to cut the videos off <laughs> before we know if the person actually lives or dies. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking out for everyone. You're a humanitarian <laughs> at heart, Rex. <laughs> You're a humanitarian. Hey, I've enjoyed it. Uh, uh, I just enjoy our chats all the time. Thanks for yeah. calling in, Rex. Sorry about uh, sorry about your team. Oh, good. Thanks, man. We'll reload and be back next year. I'm Anytime, sure. Rich. You got it. That's Rex Chapman, at Rex Chapman on Twitter. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern, on Audience.